What's the deal with feet? No, seriously, Mr. Tarantino, you, you need to explain this. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome back to Your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Snyder. If you're new around here on Yen, we pull from every corner of nerd culture to talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. As we finish up our last couple Best Picture nominees of 2020, one of the most intriguing things about this year's nominees is that we get not only one legendary film director with Martin Scorsese, but two with Quentin Tarantino. Both of these have made such highly critically acclaimed films over the years, and until this Oscar season, I hadn't seen a single one of their films. I already talked about Scorsese's The Irishman, so if you're interested in that, go check out the playlist. But today, let's take a look at Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time dot 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 in Hollywood. I'm Rick Dalton. It's my pleasure, Mr. Schwartz. Put it there. That's your son? No, it's my stunt double, Cliff Booth. If you don't know anything about it, 2019's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a comedy drama written and directed by Quentin Tarantino and starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, and Margot Robbie. Set in 1969's Hollywood, veteran actor Rick Dalton is afraid that he's coming up on the end of his acting career while his best friend and stunt double, Cliff Booth, acts as his personal driver. Meanwhile, moving in just next door is actress Sharon Tate and her husband, director Roman Polanski. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood also got nominated for Best Production Design, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, Best Cinematography, Best Sound Mixing, Best Sound Editing, Best Costume Design, Best Actor for Leonardo DiCaprio, and Best Supporting Actor for Brad Pitt. So let me get this out of the way. This is a long film. It clocks in at about three hours. It's definitely on the slower side in terms of pacing. And from what I've heard, that tends to have to do with Tarantino's style of directing. Fortunately though, I didn't find this to be too big of an issue for me, even re-watching it a second time. On your first watch, I will say the very first half of the film does suffer from a bit of is anything going to happen syndrome? Like seriously, is anything going to happen? I was wondering if a true plot even existed in this film, but after you watch the second half and you re-watch it, you, you'll notice that this slow buildup really works extremely well. With a name like Once Upon a Time, it's clear that Tarantino is going for a fairy tale like story here. A lot of this film is very much in the vein of a slice of life story. Characters just kind of do things, they live their lives, and eventually some things happen towards the end of the film. Since this is set in 1969 Hollywood, some of these events are historically accurate, so knowing a little bit of the history before the film does help the enjoyment factor, but I didn't know too much about it until after I'd watched it and kind of looked into it, so I gotta say that it didn't hurt the film at all. But not only that, because it is this fairy tale esque film, a lot of these events are also fabricated and exaggerated to make more of an entertaining an albeit shocking conclusion to a story that at first I thought was going to be extremely predictable. But we do got to talk about some minor spoilers because early on this film does introduce us to a character named uh, Charles Manson. You may know Charles Manson for his, his impact in history for um, killing a bunch of people. So <laughs> we see Charles Manson and we're like, uh oh. That's not good. And then we see a bunch of hippies and we find out that it's the famous Manson family. So we're like, uh oh, that's not good. And then Sharon Tate is in the movie and in real life she was killed by the Mansons in the year. Let me let me check my calendar. It's 1969. Uh oh, that's not good. I was a bit afraid that we'd have again a very predictable plot because this first half, not a whole lot happens. It's almost entirely slow build up. So the main plot had to be about the Mansons, right? Turns out it's kind of about them, but then the movie's not historically accurate. So uh, that ends up making a world of difference at the end of the film. In other words, instead of having the Mansons just kill Sharon Tate and it'd be like, oh no, the actress dead. We get 30 minutes of some wild, wild in events that in this fairy tale like structure is not only extremely rewarding because of all that build up, but it's really fun. So until we get to these big plot points, what ends up being the main driving force for this film for me is its characters. Leonardo DiCaprio 
plays a character within a character since he's an actor. So we get a lot of great moments of him playing like a spaghetti western character at one point where he's on TV playing a bad guy in a show called FBI. Or at the end of the movie, he does a commercial for Red Apple cigarettes. Margot Robbie is also pretty solid in the small amount of screen time that she gets. While I was concerned at first in the lack of time she has in the movie, I think what she has here is sufficient enough to tell the story that Tarantino is trying to tell, except for the fact that she really, really needs to clean her dirty feet. Regardless of that, I do like the scene where she does go into the theaters and we see the actual real Sharon Tate in one of her old movies. I feel like we hear so much about the Manson family and how they killed Tate, so it's really dope that this film doesn't shed too much light on them and instead pays a little bit of a homage to her and gives her a little bit of time to just be happy watching her own movies. But if there's anybody here that sold this for me, it's definitely Brad Pitt as Cliff Booth. A large part of this has to do with the writing. The friendship between Cliff and Rick is one of the best I've seen in films in general. It's nothing short of wholesome to watch. But on top of that, Brad Pitt brings a lot of energy and charisma to this role. I strive to be the man that Cliff Booth is. Well, except for the part that, where, where it's rumored that he killed his wife. I, I might want to steer clear of that trait. So I mentioned build up and how slow paced this film is and while the characters are a big part of how the build up works, it's also the production design and the sound design that makes up the rest of it for me. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood knows how to immerse you in its world. Every single set was meticulously crafted to look like 1960s Hollywood. Everywhere you turn, there's these sound elements that are related to the 60s. Radio ads are playing a lot, including a Batman ad in the credits. The film starts with a scene from a made-up western called Bounty Law that Tarantino wrote six episodes and he wants to turn into a real show at some point. It's all authentic and it builds up this atmosphere that I not only wanted to see more of, but experience and be a part of. And that's the thing about this film. I enjoyed it because of its characters and twist on historical events, but it's that atmosphere that really made me love Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's definitely got me interested in checking out more of Tarantino's catalog, but I also kind of want to go watch some old television shows now, just to get that 1960s Hollywood vibe. But as you know, at the end of all these, we got to ask the question, did it deserve its nominations? Well, I'm going to make it quick and easy and just say that yes, I think it did. There's nothing here that I didn't like. I'm really glad that Brad Pitt won Best Supporting Actor. He was my favorite in that category by far. I'm glad it won Production Design. Again, my favorite in that category too. I wish they had gotten a win in sound editing though, because the sound really does help make the atmosphere for me. And everything else on the screenplay to the cinematography only further makes this a great film. Doesn't necessarily mean they needed to win those categories. I just think that they excelled in this film. Now, as far as being a Best Picture nominee goes, I have heard a lot of people criticize this film for not having too much to say. I do think that is important in most films, but again, this is a slice of life story till the very end. It's brilliantly crafted. The friendship between Rick and Cliff are nice to watch and it's extremely entertaining. So while it doesn't necessarily have much to say, I do think it plays a nice homage to Sharon Tate. Plus, it's a nice time capsule to 1960s Hollywood. And so for those reasons, I'd say that I'm very glad it got nominated for Best Picture because I don't even know if I would have had the chance to see it if it didn't get that nominee. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. But let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? What are your favorite Tarantino films also? I'm trying to watch more. I need to know like which ones do I need to watch sooner rather than later. I'm very curious on all of your thoughts. So let me know down in those comments. Also, we're close to a thousand subscribers. I'm gonna keep saying it till we get there. We're a hundred away. I think it's possible this year. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button but until next time i hope you guys have a great day and i will see you next time for more your everyday nerd goodbye